This is the second tutorial of the series on the Dialog System's cutscene sequences. This tutorial covers camera work. In the first tutorial, we went over the basic camera command. In that command, the first parameter is the camera angle, the second is the subject, and the third is the duration over which to move the camera into that camera angle. The second parameter is optional. If you omit it, it automatically defaults to the speaker. Let's add another camera command, this time doing a close-up on the listener. We could also specify the player game object name, but we'll use the listener, and we'll have this one kick off at the time specified by the end keyword, which, as you'll recall from the first tutorial, is based on the dialog text length. This is what it looks like. It's a little hard to distinguish because both characters use the same model, but you can see that the camera moves because the background changes. The camera command can also move the camera to match the positions of game objects in the scene. In this case, we'll move the camera to the position of an empty game object named Terminal Camera Angle. We can leave the second parameter empty because we don't need it since we're moving to a specific game object. And we'll also include the Dialog Manager's default sequence. There's one last special keyword that you can use with the camera command. The camera angle original moves to the original camera position from before the conversation started. Here we see that the conversation moves to the terminal camera angle position, and then when the player replies, it moves to the original position. It's also possible to use a different camera for conversations and sequences. Here we've set up a special camera with post-processing effects on it. Assign this to your Dialog Manager's Sequencer Camera field. We'll also deactivate it because the Dialog Manager will activate it during sequences. Now if we play the conversation, you'll see that that sequencer camera comes active during the conversation. In addition to the camera command, there's also a live camera command that will follow a moving object and zoom 2D, which you should use when you're doing 2D scenes with an orthographic camera. With these camera commands, you may be wondering how these camera angles, such as close-up, are defined. You can find them in the default camera angle prefab. If we drop this into the scene, you can see how it's set up. The angles are child game objects that are positioned relative to the root camera angle object. The close-up angle is defined to be 1.7 units up, 0.7 units away, and rotated 180 degrees so that it's facing the subject. Medium back, on the other hand, is defined to be 1.6 units up, 1 unit away, behind the subject. If the Dialog Manager's Camera Angles field is unassigned, it will use this default Camera Angles prefab. However, it's entirely possible to provide your own custom Camera Angles.
You can add new angles manually, or you can use the Camera Angle Editor tool. To use this tool, assign a subject game object. Assign your camera angle collection. Click plus to create a new camera angle. And then select it from the dropdown. For example, we can create an angle that looks at the subject's knees. The Camera Angle Editor adds a temporary camera to the scene so that you can see what your camera angle looks like. You can save this as a prefab if you want. And you can use your new camera angle in any camera commands. That's it for camera work. The next tutorial will cover messages, which are used for timing sequences.